Hello YouTube, hey it's Dave here with another watch love video and this time I want to do a little bit of a different kind of video. I thought I wanted to do a review originally of this uh, watch that I'm talking about today, the Seiko SDGM003. But you know I've been trying to do a review of this watch for over a year and a couple of things have stopped me. That is that I never really clicked with the watch. And I want to talk a little bit about it today instead of a review of the watch. Have you ever had that experience where you just don't click with a watch? And this was a watch that I had my eye on for years. This is a watch that's called the Grand Cocktail. It's also called the Baby Grand Seiko. It was discontinued a few years ago. And really the first time I saw it, I thought this is the watch to get. It's really a, a nice upgrade to the Saab 0033-035. Nice upgrade from that, and um, it's uh, about eight to nine hundred dollars if you buy it uh, new old stock like I did. And I just thought this would be the perfect Seiko. It's gorgeous black. It's got the beautiful dial. It's got the, the that sunburst. It's got the amazing bracelet, and it just was perfect in every way. It has the six R fifteen, so a nice step up there. And uh, so I finally found it, new old stock, and I thought, well, I'm going to buy it new because this is a forever watch. I'm never going to give this up. And, and I needed a nice dressy black piece to go in my collection. So ordered it. It came in. And I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but the very second I pulled it out, I had this feeling, just this feeling come over me that this wasn't going to work. Now... Sometimes we have that feeling. I kind of had that feeling with my Aquaterra the first time I took it out. Uh, it was so I paid so much money for it, and yet it was such a simple three-hand watch. I thought, oh, you know, I had that buyer's remorse instantly. Um, but but over time, I began to grow in my appreciation of that watch. Till today, it's my absolute favorite watch in my collection. It's the one that gets the most wrist time. I thought the same thing would happen with the SDGM003. Uh, instead. The instant it came out of the box, I felt this sinking feeling. Now, what was the sinking feeling? And it's this goes pretty deep into uh, my psyche, I guess. But what happened was I picked it up, and I instantly heard that slight rattle in the bracelet. You know, the Seiko rattle. I thought maybe this time I would get, I would have a watch that didn't have kind of that Seiko rattle, because uh, this this was supposed to be a nice upgraded. Uh, bracelet. So I pulled that watch out and, and I thought, oh, it's going to grow on me. And, and it never did. There were, there were three things. One, the rattly bracelet. The second thing was the rotor. The rotor had a terribly loud noise. And, and at first I thought it was a dysfunction of the rotor, uh, that something was wrong with it. Uh, but I've I've since Googled it and found out that a lot of people have, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot when you get the 6R15. Some of them have a noisy rotor. And this is a noisy rotor that Sitting in a meeting, if I if I turned my wrist, I would hear it turn. I could hear it while I was sitting in a meeting. The sound wasn't itself annoying, except that it has this kind of cheap noise in the rotor. And so it made me just love it a little bit less. And, and then the third thing, it was running about 15 to 20 seconds slow per day. Now that's, maybe what I got was a lemon. Maybe I ordered a new old stock lemon. Uh, maybe that's the reason it was uh, on sale, or maybe it's been sitting there too long. Maybe it needs a service. Maybe I was expecting too much of it. But um, but I actually opened the back and I and I did my best to regulate it, and I got it within a you know five to ten seconds fast per day. I at least wanted it fast, and and so that really uh, actually uh, made that more bearable. Uh, but it's amazing how those three experiences right out of the box made me. Uh, made it difficult for me to bond with the watch because it's an absolutely beautiful watch in every objective way. Uh, it really has some beautiful lines on the case. The, the lines, it, it really is, can be called a baby Grand Seiko. It really has that quality. But I just didn't, I just never clicked with it. And, and I learned something uh, in my watch collecting, and that is when you don't bond with the watch, don't sell a watch. Wear it. I would pull it out of the box and wear it probably twice as often as I felt like wearing it. Um, I would make sure that this wasn't just a fad or a phase or maybe I needed more time with it. Uh, I, I had it over a year and wore it, uh, you know, once every two weeks maybe. Uh, and, so, and when I would wear it, I'd wear it two or three days in a row. 
and it just never happened. It never happened. So finally I sold it, um, and I felt good about selling it. And, and I'm sad because I had, that was the very first watch, I, f I really what I would call expensive watch at the time, that I fell in love with, had as a grail, waited two years to get it, and, and I just didn't click. Uh, I'm also going to confess to, I wonder, I wonder, because I really, th I, I really thought long and hard, painfully, about the fact that I couldn't connect with this watch. Uh, and I do wonder uh, about the Seiko brand. May, you know, I think perhaps I'm just projecting here, but we as Americans maybe struggle with this more than others of associating because they have everywhere from a $50 watch all the way up to, you know, a $10,000 Grand Seiko that maybe, uh, you know, maybe we as Americans, maybe, you know, maybe it's just me, that it's, it's a brand consciousness thing. Uh, it, you know, you hear the, the story that Toyota couldn't sell a high-end Toyota in America, so they just called it Lexus. They came up with this fancy name, gave it a whole different brand. Uh, I, I kind of wonder if I would love Grand Seiko more if it weren't, if the name Seiko wasn't in it. So I'm going to confess to may, maybe I have a psychological barrier to the word Seiko uh, being on the dial. Maybe, maybe I just, I can't see the grand beauty of this watch because, because I grew up with $50, $100 quartz Seikos. Uh, maybe that's it. But what about you guys? You guys ever have problems bonding with a watch that you thought would be a watch of a lifetime? This was the one that happened to me. Uh, I'm open to, to your insights. I'm sure I'm going to get the criticisms from the Seiko lovers. I know you're out there. Uh, but hey, I love my Seiko SKX. I wear it very, just about every weekend. Uh, I've had that. That was my very first mechanical watch. So um, can't say that I don't love a good Seiko. I just didn't love this Seiko. Well, that's what I got for now. Um, I'm trying to do more videos uh, with a lot less editing because I'm, I tend to be a perfectionist. So sorry about the ambient sound. Sorry if it's not perfect. But I figure that's a way to get some watch content out a lot quicker. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you down the road.